Welcome to One Insight. My name is Rich Litvin. I grew up in London and I now live in LA. And this is a podcast for extraordinary top performers and their coaches. You see, I've coached some of the most successful and talented people on the planet. I can see what most people cannot see. And I dare to say what most people wouldn't dare to say. And what I know about success is that on the other side of it, it can be incredibly lonely. You can feel more of an imposter the more successful you become. And when you're the most interesting person in the room, you're actually in the wrong room. Clients who are more successful, more intelligent and wealthier than you need your support more than they know and more than you can imagine. I coach around insight. Life looks one way, something happens and the world looks different and your entire world changes. It can happen in an instant. And this podcast is called One Insight because a single insight can change everything. I love coaching for an insight. An insight moment is like this. Life is one way and then you see something ever so slightly different. And from that moment on, everything has changed. In a moment, you're going to experience me coaching Christopher Maher. Christopher's a former Navy SEAL. He trained for the Olympics. He wrecked his body in the process and spent the last 20 years or more studying Western medicine and Eastern medicine and learning to how to help people strip stress out of their body the moment it gets in so it doesn't build up for years as a result of trauma or challenging situations. Christopher's a fascinating man. He has coached me and I've coached him on and off for eight years. He's a member of 4PC, my community of high-level leaders. And we get on the call and within a few moments, he has an insight. And if you listen, I don't actually say very much. And I catch myself as this is going on, just so you know, there's this thought at some point where I think, oh, this is a podcast. Maybe I should be saying more. And then it flashes into my mind, oh, no, this is perfect. I get to model for my community that powerful coaching isn't always about the magical ideas and concepts and distinctions that you bring. It's creating the space for your client to get the distinction, to have the insight after which everything is changed. Enjoy. Hi, Rich. How are you doing, buddy? Um, I'm good. It's great to see you. I just had to check in with you how long we've known each other. It's been eight years. And in that time, I have coached you. You have coached me. I have challenged you. You have challenged me. We keep upping the game with one another. So it's great yeah. to be here with you. Well, it's great to be here with you too. And thank you for the invite. Um, I know this is going to be short, yet I feel like it's going to be impactful and potent for me because something came up for me that um, I didn't know was lying underneath um, maybe a gentle worry or a, a little bit of fear okay. or you, even... You, you lead off then. Tell, tell me what's going okay, on. Okay. So the thing that's coming up for me is uh, during COVID, I'm a bit of, uh, well, I'm a heretic by nature. And so when everyone else was sitting behind closed doors, I was traveling around the world, putting on really deep intensives. Mm -hmm with people from Europe and from uh, originally from South America. And that grew into me teaching them how to do the work that I do in the world. And we're coming up on level four, which is the end of our teaching process. And then the question for me is, is where do we go from there? Mm -hmm. Meaning that I don't want to abandon them right? Like I've taken them through a year long, deep, intensive process. I've taught them five different systems of work that I use to help coach and, and grow people. And someone asked me like, Hey, when is level five going to be? Mm. And in my mind, I think I had only set myself up for level four. Mm. And I thought, Oh, these people that I love and care for are saying, hey, I want to learn more. I want to stay attached to you because I know you're impactful. You're helping me and my family. And I want to continue that relationship. 
and I wasn't, I didn't know that I wasn't ready for that. Mm. So, so what happens as you said it out loud, what, what, what comes to mind? I mean, what comes to mind is, is, um, how do I, how do I meet my own personal needs with the things that I want to do with my own life in terms of music and scoring and going to school at the Musicians Institute and putting enough time aside for my guitar and also to have time to enrich my life by going around the world and seeing and doing the things that I want to do and continue to support people that I care about and love. Mm. Yeah, that's a hard one. I, I, I appreciate the word selfish because I hyphenate it. We tend to think of the word selfish means that I'm going to do something to your cost. And actually, when you hyphenate it, selfish, it means if you put yourself first, that actually raises others up too. Mm. So let me check in. If you were going to be selfish, not to have anyone else, to cause any pain to anybody else, but you could choose the next five years to be your five years purely for you, what would you be doing? <sighs> if you'd asked me this a day ago, I don't think I would have come up with this answer, but I think it is helping these people to continue to grow and simultaneously uh, organizing it in a way that allows me to meet some of my other needs with music. Mm. Yeah. So I asked myself, I was on a flight back uh, from London yesterday and I asked myself if I got to the end of my life and there was something that I didn't do, what would my regret be? And I think my regret would be if I didn't put a serious year at the Musicians Institute learning guitar the way that I want to learn it mm. and play it the way that I know that I can play. And... Um, yeah. So. Well, let me tell you what I hear, because I hear there's two deep needs underneath. One is a very natural human need to grow. You have this deep need to grow. You're a consummate learner in all sorts of fields. And, and music is the next field where you want to grow even further. Yeah. And I know, too, you have a deep need to contribute. You want to yes. make a difference to the world. And you've learned skills over many, many years that if you can help others, and then because this skill set can be transferred on, you can help others to help others can make a big difference in the world. And sometimes those two values can clash growth and contribution. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they can clash. Hmm. Well, then I think really the thing for me to do is to sign up for the musicians Institute starting in September and then have a conversation with the community of people that I've been working and teaching and go, look, how vested are you? Is your, are you vested at a level 10 or level six or level seven? Because if you're vested at a level six or level seven, then I don't know if I want to continue to contribute at the level that I have been with the amount of energy and time and effort that it takes to grow someone, to help them rewire their nervous system and their body and their brain to access deep levels of happiness and joy and success at the level that I do it. And so I think what I'm coming to is it's a conversation that I need to have with the community mm. and to see how vested they are and then see how willing they are to bend around my school schedule in order to move forward. Cause maybe then I don't go over there for a month. I'm only over there for two weeks. And in two weeks, I adjust the way that I do things. So everyone still gets to move forward. I get to contribute and I get to grow simultaneously. So what I heard you just say is, no, I don't accept the premise that growth and contribution have to be mutually exclusive. What if I could have both? Yeah. But it would have to be on the terms that the, the, the value of growth is slightly higher for me. Yeah. So I'm willing to contribute, but based yeah. on these criteria, yeah. you have to be at 10. And you have to be willing to meet me where I will be. Yeah. 
on 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 my dates because in the last year I've been willing to bend my dates around because oh I have to take my kids here or oh we have to go over there and once I go to school I'm not going to have the luxury of doing that and to be honest with you I could be in school I don't need to work I could literally just focus on what I'm doing and simultaneously I love the community that I'm building mm -hmm. Like we were in Barcelona and uh, we had a great time. Like we worked hard, we did a great job and it was lovely to be around people that have a similar life focus, right? They want to grow. They want to be the best that they can be. They have a high level of generosity of spirit. They're learning to be more honest about what it is their desires, wants and needs are. They're communicating better. They're setting better boundaries. I want to be around people who are pushing that envelope because when I'm with people like that, I get to be more of myself mm -hmm. and I have to do less caretaking uh, when I'm spending time with them. So yeah, I think you've summed it up pretty clearly. Well, I have a little smile on my face because so often we teach what we most need to learn, right? So the things that you work with me on and vice versa, you've taught me a lot over the years about the importance of boundaries. And this is a boundaries conversation. Yeah. This is, hey, my top value for the next 12 months, possibly longer, is my growth. And I still have a need for contribution, but here are the boundaries. You show up at this place at this time with this level of commitment and I'm in. Yeah. Any of those three things you can't meet, well, we won't be talking next year. Doesn't mean I don't love you, but this is how it works this year. My mm. castle, my rules. Mm. I think this may be the happiest I've ever been on one of these calls. <laughs> I mean, that, the amount of energy flowing through my body right now is, is, is amazing. You're absolutely correct. It's a boundaries conversation. And I want to, share it in a way that's clear but also kind and caring mm. yeah. and and, well, well, and what strikes me is you're modeling for them mm. you're actually modeling for them how they got need to create boundaries in their own life so mm. the caring is there it's like i'm taking care of me i'm being selfish because you need to be too because we all yeah. need to be a little bit more selfish in our lives especially those of us who have a career what makes a real difference to other people's lives We've got to yeah. put ourselves first mm. Wow. Okay. <laughs> that might have been faster than 20 minutes. <laughs> I think it was. <laughs> thank you, my friend. Oh, thank you. That was awesome. I really appreciate you. Thank you so much. That was an awesome contribution. For most of human history, it wasn't called coaching. It was called leadership. And it's what I love to do, to coach people, to lead people, and to mess with people's thinking. If you'd like more of this, or if you'd like to learn more about our community of extraordinary top performers, go to richlitvin.com forward slash one insight.